You are listening to the Stoic Solutions Podcast, practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. I'm your host, Justin Vakula. Visit my website at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. This is episode 109, A Frugal Life Will Set You Free. I argue in favor of the frugal life and explain why I find alleged fine dining to be a poor use of my money. Happy holidays to those listening to this episode published in December of 2022. In January of 2018, I released an episode titled Preferring Frugality. Years later, I still prefer the frugal life and question what I see as unnecessary spending and consumerism. In many ways, I've leveled up my frugal game since I started with the credit card miles and points game, a focus of my other podcast, the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast, in late 2018. I traveled to many locations, including... Rome, Italy, Athens, Greece, Hawaii, Las Vegas, New Orleans, and numerous other areas at next to no cost and often with what some would call luxurious accommodations, flying in business class or first class, and staying in expensive hotels. One business class flight to Italy was advertised for about $6,000, but 160,000 Delta Sky Miles, earned from one credit card welcome offer, covered the trip. I've eaten complimentary meals, often shared with others, that would have cost $100 or more. These experiences don't disqualify me from being a Stoic because Stoics talked about such things as preferred indifference, things that can enhance our lives but aren't needed for a virtuous life. Stoics warn that too much desire for food, travel, fame, power, and other things can ruin us, especially if we sacrifice our principles in the process. We're to be mindful and ask, what must be traded for what? Shall we spend $100 eating out, for example, when we can just cook food at home for a much lower price? Should we spend $150 on designer jeans when we can spend only $20? Should we work another job to afford higher monthly payments towards a brand new car? If you choose to pursue a relationship, why spend lots of money on a first date when you can instead go to a place that sells cheap drinks, especially Panera Bread, where you can get free drinks or drinks costing very little with the Unlimited Sip Club? Why pay $3.50 for soda when you can get ice water for free? Ask yourself, is it worth trading my time for money to get things, especially a brand new car, rather than a modest used vehicle? I don't really need a brand new car. Should I spend $150 at a steakhouse when I can use $12.50 in a reward currency, casino comps, for unlimited high quality food and drinks? The M4 lounge at Borgata remains supreme. I aim to optimize my spending when it comes to things I view as optional, especially food. I don't see value in spending more than $12.50 in casino comps, for example, when I have a choice to spend only $12.50. I look at food as a means to an end, eat something to get nutrients, and feel full. Now, with the miles and points game, I haven't missed out on alleged fine dining experiences. I've had dining room meals on three complimentary cruises and comped meals valued at $100 or more at casinos and hotels. Every few weeks or months, I have a fine dining experience at next to no cost, and every time, after walking away, I don't have desire to spend full price or what I see as a high price to indulge again. Once in a while is more than enough. A frugal life allows me to lower risk. Should calamities happen from minor car troubles to major physical injury, I have money to withstand misfortune. Financial peace of mind is quite valuable to me. And with this money behind, I don't have to worry or stress about how the next bill or expense will be paid, like many living paycheck to paycheck do. I also gain freedom of time, because I don't have to put in extra work to pay for certain expenses. Even though my financial situation has greatly improved in recent years, I still have no desire to spend on alleged fine dining. It simply has no appeal to me. In fact, alleged fine dining for high cost has negative appeal because it threatens my freedom. The frugal life allows me to buy back my time and take off days when needed. Since I quit traditional work and make money mostly on my own terms, I don't have to ask for days off of work and get heat when I try to use off time, nor am I asked to work more before I leave or when I return to work. I don't have to wake at a certain time if I don't want to and go to work if I had difficulty sleeping or was sick. I can attend special events like conferences, spend time with family, and not have a schedule overly restrict me. Even those still working, enjoying the frugal life, won't have to sweat taking unpaid time off or not working overtime. Maybe one can leave work early to do other things rather than sit around in an office. The frugal life allows me to invest. I could retire early if desired because I invested in the stock market and be financially independent rather than being in my 60s or later working a 9-to-5 position. 
The frugal life allows for making money, including extra cash to park in checking or savings accounts to gain hundreds of dollars in bonuses. But Justin, do you spend it all? Do you recommend people stay at home all the time and have no entertainment or leisure? I spend some money on leisure, but when I do, I'm getting far more value than $150 on a steak for alleged fine dining when I can instead spend less or eat elsewhere instead. I purchased the Nintendo Switch Mini for use on flights and cruises when Wi-Fi is unreliable. I also play the games some time at home. I lowered the close to $200 cost with discounted Best Buy gift cards and account credits. So far, I have finished games lasting more than 100 hours, so this was a great value hour per dollar spent. I'll also spend some money on travel, but the most significant expenses, including flights and hotels, are next to no cost. I paid for admission to Stoicon in Athens, Greece, and got good value for the money, even though there was some cost for meals, train, and bus tickets. I typically buy a new cell phone every year. This year I spent about $50 for a brand new Samsung Galaxy 22, after some promotional offers. I use the phone to learn, make money, save money, and communicate with other people. I'll also spend or risk money to make money, as I do with investing, poker play, and positive expectation online blackjack play, utilizing promotions and rewards. I watch poker videos that improve my play and engage my mind. I follow various YouTube content creators and podcasters for information and entertainment. I meet friends, family, and people new to me, often sharing information and gains from the points and miles hobby. I'm establishing a nonprofit to help others. The cries of, you're missing out, from some who lament the frugal life, have yet to show me something I am missing, or at least I haven't found their arguments persuasive. I heard, you're missing out, for several years, and I still don't think I'm missing out. In a recent Facebook post, I lamented an article lauding the reopening of a steakhouse, boasting a price tag of $350 for a certain steak. A press release for said steakhouse promises, quote, luxury, style, distinction, and a, quote, first-in-class steakhouse experience. That's $350 on steak, not including tip, possible taxes, and additions. And for what? It's what I see as a hollow promise of luxury, and maybe some pleasurable feeling in your mouth for maybe a few minutes. I say maybe here, because I have heard many accounts of people spending lots of money at steakhouses, and later recounting how the food or experience did not live up to their expectations. Other entrees on this steakhouse menu feature grossly overpriced items starting around $59. Appetizers range from $14 to $27, and they'll even charge you $8 for what they label, quote, chef's special bread preparation. Interesting. Make the menu sound fancy or exclusive and charge for bread when many other places provide free bread. Sadly, the masses line up to spend in excess when they can instead go to another location at the same casino, spending maybe $10 to $20. Returning to the Facebook post where I was critical of people's reasons for such lavish spending, some inferred my psychological state, claiming I was angry, that I should relax, and that I'm bothered. Rather than providing arguments for lavish spending, they engaged in shaming language. One interesting response was, I work hard for my money, so I want to enjoy it. I fail to see why we look toward food for enjoyment and why we would be willing to spend lots of money to have pleasure from food. Working hard, I also think, should lead us to be more intentional about how we use money rather than spending with little concern. Scorn societal messaging, wanting you to engage in conspicuous consumption with messages like, you deserve it, treat yourself, have some good food, and indulge. People talk of steak as good food, but I find very little good in participating in the slaughter of animals, often pumped with chemicals, causing a great deal of environmental harm with all the water used. The production of steak, after all, takes up a large part of land, pollutes water, and often leads to animals in questionable living conditions. Vegetarian argument aside, I wouldn't even spend $60 on Thai or Indian vegetarian food when I could spend far less. Others on Facebook denied that people even ordered the $350 steak, quote, nobody in the broad sense. Even if a tiny percentage of people order the $350 steak, I still don't find value in the $350 steak, and I wouldn't even spend $60 in that steakhouse. I can't even see going to the steakhouse whether I'm vegetarian or not. The same person encouraged a message of tolerance and discouraged me making arguments against lavish spending. Quote, It is an amazing world where people make their own choices based on their own life goals and happiness. I also find no reason to convince others. I respect others that are different than me and I respect their opinions and likes and dislikes. I gave up on this type of live and let live, don't criticize others' choices or values messaging around 2009 
when I started to openly criticize intolerant behaviors and beliefs that lead to harm, particularly fundamentalist religious beliefs, including refusing medical care for children in favor of alleged faith healing. Might spending, though, be harmless? Maybe people making six figures each year can afford the cost, especially once in a while, but at least some people can afford this cost later, finding themselves in debt because they didn't listen to the frugal message. It's wild to see celebrities and professional athletes go from rags to riches and back to rags. It's sad to see people paying high amounts of credit card interest because they bought things they couldn't afford. Obesity rates are also rising in the United States, very likely due to the so-called good food or fine dining that contributes to the decay of health. Wouldn't it be great if more spoke out against lavish spending, arguing that alleged fine dining really isn't as great as advertised? And why not criticize or even ask questions about others' values or choices? I presented a case from 2005 in Washington State in which people had, shall we say, intimate encounters with horses. One such encounter led to a man's death and a son without a father. In a documentary produced after the incident, people argued that horse love is just like loving a human, and love that a human can have for a human. This shouldn't be contested or made illegal, according to some people in the documentary. Is it wrong to criticize these choices if people decide this will lead to happiness? Should we respect their opinions? If it's okay to criticize or raise questions about one value, why is it inappropriate to raise questions about others' values? Stoic authors call us to question everything, especially our own beliefs and the beliefs of our friends and families. We should especially question crowds and ask whether popular opinion is correct. Just because something is popular does not make it right. One commenter also spoke about how at the end of one's life, we should spend money on first-class accommodations, travel, and Michelin star restaurants, rather than wealth going to children and the government. Personally, I'd rather my money go to worthwhile charitable funds instead of the Michelin star restaurants. I can also travel at next to no cost already, rather than spending in excess. I'd rather not engage in a high degree of hedonism at the end of my life or any part of my life, especially if it involves high cost. Leisure is occasionally okay, but I'm aware that too much indulgence can corrupt, and the costs add up. Psychological research also talks about what's referred to as the hedonic treadmill. As lifestyle creep sets in, spending more money to have more things or experiences, we spend more and more and never end up finding lasting happiness in many cases. The same commenter said that hopefully I'll have more money later in life to afford, quote, nice things like steak. As I mentioned, I don't want the steak. I don't think it's a nice thing, and I have no desire to spend for alleged fine dining even though I can't afford it. The issue isn't whether I can afford it. The issue is that I don't find an argument for spending money on expensive food. What were some other arguments for alleged fine dining? People mentioned they like to spend money at steakhouses for what they refer to as special occasions. I find the phrase special occasion to be suspect because it's arbitrary. Any occasion can be viewed as special, and calling an occasion special is often just a way or excuse to justify spending money. Why do you need to spend in excess to commemorate an alleged special occasion? Why can't you just meet with people at Panera Bread, a local Indian restaurant, or somewhere else, spending no more than $15 a person? Enjoy the moment of conversation, physical shared space, and more without spending $60 on a steak or something else. Similar to a special occasion argument, someone noted that they liked having, quote, a memory of good eats and company after he spent $57. I fail to see why we need to spend $57 when we could instead spend less and still have memories, companies, and food. Some talk about how they enjoy the service and are willing to pay more for the service. What's so special about a team of wait staff bringing items to your table that you're willing to spend maybe $100 when you can instead have spent 15 or less? Personally, I find value in saving time and having food already prepared. What a wonder of modern technology is to order ahead on an app like Grubhub, especially when you have a $10 credit to cover the cost of Chinese food. After showering at a local gym, I place my order, walk next door to the restaurant, and eat the food there, rather than having to wait on a team of waiters to bring bread, water, appetizers, an entree, and then dessert. I suppose if you're with other people or want to delay the arrival of food, okay, but even then, I don't want to pay such a high price for such an alleged experience of service. One commenter then criticized how I spend my money, saying that some would call me cheap, and that my behavior can look a bit crazy, saying no judgment. She then asks why I'm judgmental when parts of my life can be, quote, ripped apart. I welcome such objections to my lifestyle, but I got none. If someone wants to present an argument that I can use my time better, or the things that I'm doing aren't yielding a good return, I'm happy to hear that. In fact, this is how I improved in recent years, 
especially in the game of poker, subjecting my play to scrutiny by reviewing hands, sending my thoughts to friends, forums, different groups. I find it odd to say I am being judgmental, but that's not an argument for the lavish spending. It's just them seemingly discouraging arguments happening. Maybe I can cut my own hair rather than paying $15, tip included, at a local barbershop? Perhaps, but my hair cutting skills aren't great, and this likely will take more time than going to the barbershop. Should I cancel a gym membership for maybe $275 a year when I can just run outside? Maybe not, because the weather can be a hindrance and there can be safety concerns. Can I learn how to fix and maintain my own car versus paying others? Maybe not, since my auto repair skills are low. I've estimated monthly expenses at about $2,000 on average for everything, and even then, some of these expenses lead to more money or saving money, including paying for a cell phone bill and paying for car insurance that I need to drive legally. Some costs are worthwhile, but high spending on alleged fine dining in my eyes is not. The best argument I heard for lavish spending on food appealed to the uniqueness of ingredients and appreciating a specialized cooking technique they could not muster. The commenter didn't say he'd spend $350 on steak, but at least this was something other than cliches and shaming language. Personally, I sometimes eat at Thai and Indian restaurants for low cost, especially when traveling and low on free options. Both types of cuisine include ingredients I don't use at home and involve food that I don't cook. However, I don't need to spend $60 or more for uniqueness or a specialized cooking technique. In the end, as commenters have alluded to, people will spend money for preferred indifference, but question how and why you spend your money. Question your wants and priorities. Are you really getting value from the things you spend money on? Might societal messaging about what's worth spending on from the people who want you to spend money be flawed? Ask also how you're spending your time and attention. Be mindful in all areas of life. Question everything, even Stoic philosophy. I'll wrap up providing some quotes from the Stoic author Seneca, who encourages frugal living. On being happy with less and not trading our time for lavish things. Nature's needs are easily provided and ready to hand. It is the superfluous things for which men sweat, the superfluous things that wear a toga's threadbare. They force us to grow old in camp, that dash upon us foreign shores. That which is enough is ready to our hands. He who has made a fair compact with poverty is rich. On not being slavish to bodily pleasures. I do not maintain that the body is not to be indulged at all, but I maintain that we must not be slaves to it. We should conduct ourselves not as if we ought to live for the body, but as if we could not live without it. On not conforming to the crowds and having special occasions without extravagance. It shows much more courage to remain dry and sober when the mob is drunk and vomiting, but it shows greater self-control to refuse to withdraw oneself and do what the crowd does, but in a different way, thus neither making oneself conspicuous nor becoming one of the crowd, for one may keep holiday without extravagance. On the simplicity of fulfilling hunger and saving your money. A pleasure of that sort is according to our nature, but it is not according to our needs. One owes nothing to it. Whatever is expended upon it is a free gift. The belly will not listen to advice. It makes demands. It importunes. And yet it is not a troublesome creditor. You can send it away at small cost, provided only you give it what you owe, not merely all you are able to give. On the dangers of too much desire for pleasure. Desire must have unbounded space for its excursions, if it transgresses nature's mean. Utility measures our needs, but by what standards can you check the superfluous? It is for this reason that men sink themselves in pleasures, and they cannot do without them once they have become accustomed to them. And for this reason, they are the most wretched, because they have reached such a pass that what was once superfluous to them has become indispensable, and so they are slaves of their own pleasures instead of enjoying them. They even love their own ills. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more content. See the show notes for more information and links surrounding topics discussed in this episode. Support my efforts through my Patreon page, found at StoicSolutionsPodcast.com. Access special perks, including having upcoming podcast guests answer your questions, custom-made podcast episodes, and private one-on-one calls to discuss whatever you'd like. Visit my other podcast at HurdyGurdyTravel.com. That's H-U-R-D-Y-G-U-R-D-Y Travel.com to learn how to make money, save money, and travel the world at next to no cost with credit card rewards, deals, and loyalty programs. Find me in the 2022 book, Stoicism Today, Selected Writings, Volume 4. Order a paperback or Kindle version of the book from Amazon.com. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day.